and 1694. Here to what's cooking the nation's food, wine, restaurant, and travel program. I'm Michael Horn along with Paul Stern. Chris Rankin is uh, with us. He's the son of uh, Kenny Rankin, a longtime Music City industry professional. He has remastered all of uh, his dad's uh, music. Do we have Chris with us right now, Paul Stern? We certainly do, Mike. Welcome, Chris, hey, to the guys. broadcast. How you doing? Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, tell me about this. Now, first, let's talk about uh, you before we get to uh, to your dad, Kenny. And you have been in the music industry yourself on the technical side of things, aren't you? You did this whole remastering thing. Tell us about it. Oh uh, well, I was involved in uh, you know when my dad passed away, he was in the process of having the uh, earlier recordings of his career reissued by uh, Mac Avenue slash Sly Dog on their Sly Dog imprint. And uh, when he passed, we kept the project moving forward as in terms of, you know, just to be able to continue his musical legacy and make it available for his uh, fans that have been asking for it and hopefully to create some new fans. And in that process, uh, when we took over moving forward with that, we were able to locate uh, some of the original master tapes, oh, wow. the original stereo mixes. And uh, which at that at that point he hadn't even been able to to discover. Wow, where did you find uh, those? How, how did you guys uh, get get in touch with those? You know, we through through uh, some really diligent work on on the part of uh, a few of the people over at Mac Avenue, uh, Randall Kennedy and Denny Stillwell uh, over there. They uh, used some of their contacts and felt around and actually came up with uh, the tapes in the Warner Brothers archives. Which, which is where the they, they the albums were originally done on Little David Records, and uh, Warner's had re, uh, re gotten the rights to Little David through the course of time, and and there they were. Although uh, my dad retained ownership of the masters, they were still in the Warner's archives. So subsequently, we got a hold of them, and with my dear friend Joe Gastworth, who's one of the most renowned mastering engineers in the world. We took those tapes and, and reconditioned them and remastered them and took them back to their original sonic quality. And Unbelievable. And beautiful orchestrations that were done by uh, Don Costa and oh. Michael Stewart uh, in, in making those beautiful records. So it was truly a labor of love for uh, my sisters and myself, Jenna and Chanda. It's been just uh, over a year since your father passed well. away, hasn't it, to Chris? Yeah, it was uh, June 7th of last year, so, so here, just here's, a bit over a year. Here's the thing. Let's talk about your dad, Kenny Rankin, because there are in the in the jazz community, jazz artists are always known. People talk about him. It's almost like an inside club. Uh, people know all the artists. But outside of the jazz community, very few people sometimes break through with pure, just wonderful jazz music. And your dad was able to do that. He would get his songs not only played on jazz stations, but on mainstream, easy listening pop stations. And, and that was an incredible feat. That it speaks volumes for his work and the way his songs were able to cross over. Uh, did he, when he was putting these songs together, did he look for things that would cross over? Or was it just the way that he performed them that allowed more uh, than just a jazz audience to enjoy the music? You know, I think he just came. The music that he created and, and was a part of really just came from his soul and from his, his inside. It was never anything that was contrived or looking for any commercial success, of which there really there really wasn't any a whole lot of commercial success throughout his career. Uh, he was mainly known as a musician's musician, as, as you alluded to, right. you know, throughout the jazz community. He's, he's very uh, well thought of and, and as, as one of those enduring legacy type artists who's had a, a long enduring career which we're very proud of and and uh, although uh, the large commercial success eluded him he was very happy with his uh, his place and lot in life and his contribution to the uh, the musical scene and and his legacy so we're we're very proud to be able to present that to people yeah. in this you know, with the remastered albums and finally making all of that material available to, yeah. It'll be, as I said, to his fans. The music will live on forever. We're talking with Chris Rankin and you, along with uh, your sisters, Gina and Chandra, getting together and uh, getting this uh, remastering of uh, of their father, Kenny Rankin's music. And 
are these, if we're trying to get this collection, is it out now? When will it be out? What label is it on? How do we find it? It actually it, can, it was released uh, to the public last February to commemorate what would have been Dad's 60th birthday. Um, so we wanted to get that out in, in time to honor that for him. And it's available, you know, at all the usual uh, digital outlets and also in physical CD release for those of those of you like me that uh, prefer to have it in a physical form versus an MP3 format. Right, no, right, right. Uh, no, no slag to the technology, but uh, there's still something about having the artwork to look at and hold in your hand and read the liner notes, which we also, uh, you know, um, reproduced from all of the original art, uh, album artwork and. And we tried to really maintain the the uh, integrity of the original work all the way through, from the liner notes and the artwork, and to the sonic quality of of the songs. How many songs? Done. How many songs in the collection? Oh gosh, you know, uh, it's a six six albums that were reissued, and uh, I think gosh, there's like twelve to ten to twelve tracks on each one. I don't know exactly how many. Uh, which is I should, but I don't. Uh, but we're, you know, it's it's all of the really beautiful classic works that he uh, and interpretations that he did. It's, it encompasses a lot of his early original work, which is, uh, you know, some of us consider to be some of, some of his finest work of his career. Was I one of the cuts in that earlier stuff? We played one of the cuts was a, a cut called Songbird. Is that on there? Uh, I think that's actually from one of the later albums. Yeah, um, uh, that's when I was at. Uh, is we sort of uh, were playing the stuff at KFI uh, when I was there later on, and that was like when he reinvented himself and came out with more. Is that in this collection? Yeah, well, this is more. This is more of his original. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. This, this is this is actually the first he Dad put out thirteen albums over right. the course of his career, okay. and these are the first six. So will we maybe um, have more um, on. more collections coming out after this first six? You think? Well, we're we're looking through the archives and seeing what the, the, what kind of hidden gems may be in there in terms of you know some uh, maybe possibly some unreleased material that. That oh, we were yeah. aware of some stuff that were in his demo archives, and also looking for some rarities and maybe some other songs that he may have tried out in, uh, to, you know, in his interpretive manner of uh, doing other people's songs. So we're taking a look at all of that now that some time has passed. We'll be going into those archives and seeing if there's anything worth calling from that. that Good, Chris. Where can we get the album? Let's get that out there. Where can we find it? Uh, as I said, you know, iTunes, uh, all the usual uh, online. Is there a website? Com. Kenny Rankin. Kenny Rankin. Com. Dot com will take you to those links. There's Mac Thanks so Avenue much. Records. Th thank you so much, Chris. Chris, uh, very good stuff. You order a glass of your favorite.